field studies, ethnography and anthropology to a group of bureaucrats um, was a test. Um, we had to come back a few times to actually not only describe what ethnography was, but also highlight how it's been applied in other instances that has opened up a world of insights about how people are actually experiencing things. It didn't have to be about the business government stuff. Um, so ethnography is now a new term, I suppose, if you like, in some parts of Canberra as a result of design guide. Um, but we found that uh, rapid ethnography of 15 businesses along the east coast of um, Australia and Canberra was just um, really insightful in terms of, um, as you would all be aware, the sort of the blindingly obvious that no one actually talks about or assumes um, is understood. Um, and, and pulling those sort of insights out to challenge the nature of is there too much red tape? Well, in fact, there might be a lot of red tape. In fact, the, the too much was too much change and no one tells you about it. Um, the, there was a lot of red tape. It was actually the staff within the public sector that actually have to deal with red tape. And that um, the number of times when we heard from entrepreneurs that um, had a struggle with dealing with governments so that they would um, ring a friend, um, join a linking group in order to find someone else that might find, tell them how to navigate into government. So all of these sort of insights that are not available when you just assume that there's a problem and so you'll sort of whack something together and fix it. Um, we built um, up a network, we drew on the power, if you like, and the influence of outside groups. So peak bodies, the sort of Business Council of Australia, and this could be anyone, anywhere, really. Who is it that were influencing the sort of the nature of understanding and action? Um, so BCA, they were all pretty interested. And intriguingly, when you sort of say, well, how do you introduce design into government? Well, the, the people that were most interested were the outsiders, not necessarily the people within government. And they provided us with um, confidence about pursuing um, more of the issues around not just the insights, but what were we going to do about it. And the we was, going, was actually growing to a sort of a sizable number, not just of these pit bodies, um, hundreds of public servants, not just within Canberra, but along the East Coast, were really keen to actually participate in a space that wanted to hear from people their ideas, their experiences, and then their preparedness to actually put time in, including small business owners who actually thought it was such a good idea, they wanted to participate in some solution building and workshopping. Um, we, we used um, an online dialogue app, Ideas Platform, that possibly wasn't an overnight success. Well, in fact, let me be clear, it wasn't a great success. Um, <clears throat> and I think that this is part of the sort of the culture and the sort of building experience, the sort of um, understanding about how these tools might be used and when they come on board. But we got 50 ideas out of it. We ran lots and lots of workshops. Um, Jack's ran a best, you know, one of the best ones um, that we did um, as well in terms of coming up with ideas to move forward. So we sort of analysed the problem, we'd heard from the public servants, they came up with some really good ideas and I suppose um, that was what uh, we'd run a workshop across government and had people from New South Wales and Queensland and the Commonwealth all together coming to up with ideas about how to make business government interactions work better, including what was the current problem. And there were some really good ideas that came out of that and we just shelved them because we had to sort of, I thought we were having to build up the case from the field as to how that might best be balanced. And I talked then to a woman who's um, an ethnographer with BT Services here in Sydney who's a former IDEO um, partner. And I said to her, look, I'm really 
frustrated because it's going to take us a really long time to get the field work done. But we've got all these good ideas just on the shelf. And she said, don't leave them on the shelf because every time that you actually interact with another group, be it public servants, intermediaries, um, or businesses, you can test these ideas. It doesn't have to be as though it's a laboratory <coughs> hour in RCT or clean, clean um, sort of process. Keep on iterating and understanding better what these ideas might be. So, we ended up with five areas. How might business and government interactions work better? We um, I, I actually forgot to mention, because we had no money, we had to go find some and find parts of government that were prepared to actually um, put a little bit into the pool. So we produced a prospectus, which is a pretty unusual thing to do within the Commonwealth Government, whose sort of ongoing um, budget is huge. But we got, I think, 10 government agencies putting in between 20 and $50,000 and the tax office was the strongest supporter of the whole thing. Um, so thank you to the tax office. And they're actually, as a government agency, no matter what we think of them in personal experiences, um, they are so ahead of the game in terms of their um, commitment to design and engaging people early on. So anyway, that's the ad for the tax office. We came up with five areas and that's what this thing is here about um, that we constantly tested in terms of what might be changes that would make a difference. Navigating government was a problem, so why not use the crowd of people in business to help other businesses find their way through the spaghetti. Um, so that was a prototype that we ran a, work, a series of workshops around actually um, and that parts of um, government are now working on. So there are a whole range of these workshops and the most beautiful thing with the design tools and people like Jax um, and others, the designers themselves, were about capturing all of this information and then fine tuning a process that extracted more meaning, testing ideas, focusing in on how it might play out in real life um, to the degree that um, a series of prototypes, uh, you could call them low fidelity, um, but a few websites <coughs> have been produced. But in, a, in addition to that, um, other departments have now picked up some of these concepts to take them further. Fix-it squads, for example, were something that the tax office and a few other acronymed organisations are now working on. And that thing up in the right hand side, there was agreement between the designers across Canberra and others that it would be really good to share the tool sets and their processes for design, which sort of linked up with project funding and you know, all of those sorts of um, stages of how to take an idea from a concept through to action. Um, so they're starting to build that into the way they operate collectively. Forces of change. The forces of darkness and lightness in terms of our experience in design gov. We, um, we had the authority of the secretary's board to actually have, do stuff. So that was positive. And we were on the edge. We were free to collaborate with anyone. Um, however, the governance that um, was wrapped around us was as though we were a very expensive highly critically important organisation that had established ways of operating. You could say we were swamped by governance. <laughs> and and uh, there's some challenges there. Um, and after a few more drinks, I'll tell you the real story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, I think what that highlights is this sort of test. We want to be, in a, you know, government or public sectors want to be innovative, but they sort of find it really hard to let the strings go. And so what I did then was create an international advisory board so that there were experts from all over the, the world actually saying that what we were doing was okay. 
And I think had we been allowed to actually operate for a three-year period, which would be, was the sort of general wisdom about how to sort of you create something and then establish at least a mode of operating in order that it can be embedded in at least the heads rather, um, rather than the sort of way, it would have been good. Anyway, we only lasted for 18 months which and had 50% of time and funds. But we built a prospectus process for engaging the departments. That was actually a really positive way of sort of bringing people on board. Capability, limited design skills, we actually took off when we got a few designers on board. Um, um, so that, that's really tricky and there isn't a sort of, at least at the Commonwealth level, a way of describing design as, as a sort of a, a skill set or a discipline and I think that there would be value there. Um, the leadership in the culture is something that will take some time to um, become bold, understanding in what positions or projects or issues you can be bold. Um, and when when you have to be careful, and I think that the um, the fact that the, the there's a slowly growing sort of preparedness to bring the citizens on inside um, beyond being on a consultative committee, I think that some of the things that we did um, actually highlighted that you can get grand ideas mm -hmm. and actually a really sophisticated understanding of the role of government, and so to not to throw, um, to actually throw out the, the opportunities to be a wise contributor when you're actually brought with into, a, into a public organisation to actually do some, some different things is really wonderful. And that what we found was the, the citizen in this instance, it was small business owners, were actually very mindful of the opportunity they had and the responsibility to actually not sort of um, blow the, the opportunity and blow up the process by sort of taking advantage of people, etc. Um, the issue around failure is a really important one that takes that'll take a long time to go through, but that whole issue of risk to be perfect before you even start. Um, Bill Clinton's got finally got it. I've seen him on YouTube talking about design and he <coughs> understands it. you design to perfection, not you actually do lots of briefs, if you know, the, the role of government before you actually get started. And I think the issues around structures and accountability we discovered silos dominated. Um, so that actually meant the inefficiencies were really evident when you're trying to work across government. Um, we became a, a sensor of inefficiency and silliness um, because we could see how there was so much duplication of the same thing across departments. Trying to get communication across departments was tricky even from the inside rather than even knowing how many times business were. Um, and I suppose the other insights that we gained was that there was real value for being a a neutral broker um, and one of the examples in fact was in New South Wales when the Farmers Federation fellow came up to me and said would you be able to bring together environment, agriculture um, and the clean energy people because I can't get traction about carbon farming um, which is a huge opportunity but there was no one at Commonwealth or state levels or any of these other instances of portfolios that were prepared to sort of negotiate or even listen to the experiences as a whole. So, um, that's me. I guess the, the thing is the forces of change, the forces of good design are really powerful and we just need to continue to actually um, share stories and also find the leaders that actually want to have a go at doing something differently, that bring on board a collaborative um, process with a zeal for actually, as um, the guy from Second Road says, it's about method and mindset. And then when you let the gates open and bring on the citizens inside, it's about faith because you've actually lost any control that you thought you might have. And you have to rely on the collective instincts to actually find that right path. Thanks.